Good morning. Good morning. I welcome each and every one of you to our service this morning. For those of you in person who I've missed so desperately over these last many months, and for our friends that continue to join us on Zoom and on YouTube. So welcome to each and every one as we gather for worship today. And we're going to begin our service as we sing a beautiful hymn, Amazing Grace, number 352. be seated. <clears throat> and again, warm welcome to each one of you as we gather together today. And just a, a few quick announcements. First of all, just always a reminder of upcoming worship opportunities through the week on Wednesday morning at 1030 in person and on Zoom. Uh, Friday on the steps of the church for the Litany of Re Reconciliation and Thursday evening at 5 for the Walk of the Labyrinth, and we do invite you to come and join us for that quiet time of prayer and personal meditation. Uh, just also, too, the celebrations of the coming week, we wish happy birthday this week to Pat Ladd and to Marjorie McLennan. So God's blessing on each one as you celebrate your special day in the coming week. Uh, we continue to be uh, uh, looking for uh, full vaccination to attend in-person worship. We're not going to be tracking that, but we will be asking people just to monitor that on themselves and also do a self-assessment before attending church. And this is the last announcement because I want it to stay in your minds. Next Sunday is the time change. So please remember to spring forward next Saturday evening before you go to bed, and then you'll still get to church on time. So that's next Saturday night. Please change your clocks as we go ahead into our, our new timeline. Are there any other announcements? Uh, wave at me if there's things I've forgotten. Oh, yes, thank you, John. Yes, in your insert, in your bulletin, 
is an, are a number of different things that the outreach uh, committee are involved in, uh, uh, not least of which we're collecting, of course, funds for Doctors Without Borders who are doing invaluable work around the world and particularly in Europe right now. But also we have our upcoming Lenten lunch. Now that's going to be a takeout opportunity this year. Um, and there is a little order form for food in your bulletin. So please fill that out. You can leave it in the donation basket at the back of the church. And then we will know how many people and what to order and what to make for that lunch. So please do that. And it's a way of supporting outreach ministries that continue to do good work locally and globally uh, from this place. Any other announcements that I've missed that I should make note of? Good. Well, we're going to invite you to stand. No more paperwork. We have books today. And I'm going to invite you to turn to page 185 as we greet one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. And at the top of page 187, I invite you to join with me in the Trisagion, which we will say together three times. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. And please join me in the colic for today found in the bulletin. Heavenly Father, your Son confronted the powers of darkness that obscure your compassion and love for all creations. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer so that we may witness to that saving love proclaimed in Jesus Christ our Savior. Would you please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you as a special possession, and you have conquered it and settled there, Put some of the first produce of each crop you harvest into a basket and bring it to the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored. Go to the priest in charge at that time and say to him, with this gift, I acknowledge to the Lord your God that I have entered the land he swore to our ancestors he would give us. The priest will then take the basket from your hand and set it before the altar of the Lord your God. You must then say in the presence of the Lord your God, my ancestor Jacob was a wandering Aramean who went to live as a foreigner in Egypt. His family arrived few in number, but in Egypt they became a large and mighty nation. When the Egyptians oppressed and humiliated us by making us their slaves, we cried out to the Lord, the God of your ancestors. <clears throat> he heard our cries and saw our hardships, toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand, powerful arm, with overwhelming terror, with miraculous signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. And now, O Lord, I have brought you the first portion of the harvest you have given me from the ground. Then place the produce before the Lord your God and bow to the ground in worship before him. Afterwards, you may go and celebrate because of all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. Remember to include the Levites and the foreigners living among you in this celebration. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Our psalm passage for this morning is a portion of Psalm 91. You'll find that on page 828 in your book of alternative service. I'm going to read verses 9 through 16 responsively by the half verse and then join together in the prayer at the end. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, there shall no evil happen to you. For he shall give his angels charge over you. They shall bear you in their hands. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. You shall call upon me and I will answer him. With long life will I satisfy him. Together. Gracious God, in times of anxiety and stress, teach us to wait in quietness for your protection and defense. Made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continue with our second reading. A reading from the letter to the Romans. In fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. In our gradual hymn is hymn number 175, 40 days and 40 nights.
be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. Then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone. Then the de temple took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them, the devil said, because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you will worship me. Jesus replied, The scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to the Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, he will order his angels to protect and guard you, and they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, you must not tempt the Lord your God. When the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. The Gospel of Christ. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, uphold me that I might uplift thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I began my day today watching the news and uh, continue to feel the, the pain and heartbreak of the situation and circumstance in Ukraine. And I, I look at the devastation of those cities, uh, the loss of so many innocent lives already, and then in the midst of a ceasefire, um, again, the bombardment continuing and beginning again, even as people try to leave and flee for safety. And, and our hearts continue to be, um, uh, to go out to the people of Ukraine, for people here who have family in that part of the world, for the many who are now refugees seeking safe places in, in the surrounding countries. And we just pray for a change of hearts and circumstance. So as I begin my homily today, I wanted to share again the prayer that the Archbishop of Canterbury circulated uh, through Facebook uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, and I think that prayer is, is, is needful and powerful now as it was then. And I just want to take a moment in prayer for Ukraine before we begin. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for peace and for the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be circulating later on in the week too. A, a notice came through from the Primates Fund and they're beginning to collect monies to send over to help with relief efforts for the people there. And there'll be more opportunities for us to support, not just by prayer, but in action as well, uh, the needs of the people of Ukraine. Today we enter fully into this journey that we call Lent. And over the last, uh, last Sunday and on, on Ash Wednesday, uh, I talked a little bit about that sense of the wilderness and, and what the wilderness invites us and calls us to. And, and where we find the gift and the joy of that wilderness journey. And I pointed out last Sunday, uh, the, the Feast of the Transfiguration, when I thought about entering Lent and that, that wilderness image, 
uh, was not very appealing for me at the start of my thinking around the season of Lent. But as I began to really reflect on what that season was about, I discovered that not only is, 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 is the wilderness appealing, but the invitation to there to be in the wilderness is a gift for us at this time. Because it's in the wilderness that we are given the opportunity to engage with God, the Creator, Jesus our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer in a particularly deep and meaningful way. A way that we can't get to at times with the busyness and the hustle bus and bustle and the worries and the challenges of life. This is a moment in our year where the church invites us really to stop for a bit and to engage with the Holy One of God. And so the wilderness for me, in the midst of all that's going on and the continued worry about pandemic and what's going on in Europe right now, to spend time alone in the presence of God is a gift. I want to be there. I want to journey in that wilderness because God is already there waiting for me, for us to arrive. And the way that I think that we do that and take advantage and take a hold of, of the whole idea of being in the wilderness and engaging with God, I think can be found in the Lenten disciplines that we're invited to observe at the beginning of Lent on Ash Wednesday by self-examination, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and reading and meditating on the Word of God. Five things that we're invited to do particularly to engage with the God of love in our wilderness journey. And it begins with self-examination and repentance. And so it's an opportunity, first and foremost, for us to look inward at ourselves and to see where it is that we need God uh, engaging in our own personal life and faith and relationship with God. A few weeks ago, uh, my family and I, since the pandemic began, instituted a, a family Zoom call every Sunday afternoon at 4.30. And it has become one of the precious things that has grown out of the pandemic experience. And I always look forward to talking to my brother and my two sisters and catching up on what's happening in life. My brother is a retired Anglican priest, so inevitably there's a lot of talk about church. I think my sisters just roll their eyes at times, but uh, that's okay. We love to talk about the different services we've been to. And a couple of weeks ago, he and his wife Janet, my brother John and his wife Janet, shared with me this really neat image of, that comes out of a, uh, an artistic uh, endeavor out of Japan. Now, the Japanese uh, have um, tea, a lot of tea ceremonies, and they they have precious tea services that are handed down to families generation after generation after generation. But as all of us know, and particularly those of us who have had little ones around recently, uh, the dishes don't always make it all the way through the experience. And things get broken and cracked and dropped, etc. Well, the, the art method that they were sharing with me is something called kin, kintsuji. And it is taking those broken pieces, taking that broken china, and, and putting it back together again. And what's really interesting about this, now, if I was trying to fix something at home, and I'm desperately bad at doing any of that, but if I was trying, I would do everything in my power to make sure you couldn't see where the break was, where the crack was, or where it was fixed. Kintsuji looks at it completely differently. They see that those cracks and those broken pieces are a part of the beauty of the piece. That it doesn't take away from it, it actually adds to it. And so when they put the pieces back together, they put it back together with gold. So every crack and fissure can be seen by the person using the tea service. And, and uh, it, it, they, what they understand is that those those places where it's broken add to the beauty and can actually even make a stronger piece of art out of the, out of the broken pieces. Now, the art of kintsuji isn't just about fixing broken dishes. 
It's also life, an invitation for people to understand that doing this artwork is a metaphor for our lives as well. That as we examine the brokenness of our lives, and as we deal with that brokenness, the process of repairing ourselves, whether we see that as God or how we understand that in our lives, we actually create something that's more unique, more beautiful, and more resilient. To me, that is the invitation of self-examination and repentance. It's the opportunity for us to lay our brokenness before God. And, and I'm not just referring to sin and the things that we've done wrong, but, but our hearts and our lives and our spirits and all the things that challenge them, weigh them down. That brokenness of our lives we place before God and in his love for us, he puts us back together again. And those places where we are broken become something that we take with us in our next part of the journey. We carry the learnings and the experience of, of those things with us as we move forward as people of God. More unique, more beautiful, and more resilient. And it seemed to me that that image, that idea of Kintsuji, fit beautifully into this first step, this first part, this first discipline of Lent. Because it's only in offering God our brokenness that we give God the opportunity to put us back together again. To heal those wounds, those cracks and those broken pieces that are part of our lives as we live them. And to allow God's healing, forgiving love to make it right again. And so as we start in full this Lenten journey... We begin by looking at ourselves and giving God the opportunity to heal and to make whole those things that are broken within us. To become fuller, more resilient, and more beautiful people of God as we move forward in our Lenten journey and beyond that as servants of the living Christ. So we continue our Lenten journey and we continue to engage the God of love in that wilderness experience. And as we do that, the true gift of, of Lent will be ours as we continue in prayer and fasting and all the other disciplines. In those things, we meet God. Amen. Our service continues now with the prayers of the people. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Father. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that we, we may unite in accordance with your will, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, may your mercy hear us. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy hear us. Today, in the Anglican Communion Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Korea. In the Anglican Lutheran Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Right Reverend Sandra Fife, Bishop, and the people and clergy of the Diocese of Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. In the Lutheran Church, we pray for the Dean, Council, and Congregations of Northern Area of the Eastern Synod. In our diocese, we pray for Bishop Michael and Sophie. We also pray for the parish of Newborough Westport, the Reverend Canon Blair Peaver. In our community, we pray for our congregations of St. John's and St. Lawrence and for our shared ministry. In our community, we pray for the Centennial Road Church, leader Pastor Jason Frizzell. We also pray for our friends at St. Paul's, Canon Neil Dillabell and Reverend Ted Guthrie, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and Pastor Moses Prashad and Christ United Church in Lynn. Today in our parish prayer cycle, we pray for Nancy Pilot, Christopher Porter, Carol Potter, and Dorothy Shipton. We pray for our clergy, Michael and George, our staff and wardens. 
For those preparing for baptism and confirmation, especially for Veronica and Hillary, and for those seeking to renew their confirmation vows, and for the teachers and sponsors, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, hear mercy, hear us. We pray for peace in all countries of our world, especially in Ukraine. We pray for our global leaders that they may with good faith work towards a peaceful resolution of the current war there. We pray for those responsible for distributing and giving the vaccines for COVID-19 that our world might soon begin to recover from the pandemic. We pray for our troops serving in many parts of our world and members of our regiment, the Brockville Rifles, particularly those who are presently deployed. We pray for all peoples living in the area of conflict and for all refugees fleeing to safer countries. We pray for our planet, that we might all be faithful stewards of the earth and that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among all nations and peoples. Lord of compassion, in your mercy hear us. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, <coughs> for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For those whom we have injured or offended, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For the grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. In communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. God our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence with prayer, fasting, and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up by your unfailing mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with a nod of a head, please share the peace with those around you. That's good. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 509, Precious Lord.
please join me in the prayer over the gifts. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer 3 on page 198. I invite you to stand, sit, or kneel, whichever you're most comfortable and accustomed to doing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior taught us, let us sing. of the bread number seven. We break this bread. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall live. My brothers and sisters, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
As you are able, I invite you to stand for the concluding prayers. We begin with the prayer after communion, which we say together. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God of con reconciliation bless you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you, and the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our concluding hymn, one we all love to sing, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, number 565. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son. He is the sacrifice for our sins. If God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. If we love one another, God is in us. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you again all for joining us for church online, on Zoom, and particularly here in person. We'll look forward to the days ahead. God bless.